um as we begin to wrap up this month's focus on divine acceleration you know i wanted to understand something about when we give a focus when we wrap up the focus of the months it doesn't mean that that's the end the truth is that the focus of the month is like a what we are doing is a building someone say we are doing a building so it's one layer you build the next month on that layer i get what i'm saying uh-huh like today i came across a message pastor preached yesterday last year on divine acceleration almost about this time and guess what that's the the truth that we ran with as a ministry most of this year praise the lord and we are building the next year whatever the focus will be on that one i get what i'm saying so so the truths you discover the things that you learned you carry it on it now becomes a part of your life it becomes a part of your ministry becomes a part of your career it becomes a part of your business praise the lord hallelujah today i'll be talking to us about something important is an important key to acceleration and as i was listening to pastor's message he mentioned it very very importantly so i'll be talking to you today about the benefits and the blessings of speaking in tongues the benefits and the blessings of speaking in tongues i wish i had the time i'll have talked to you about 50 reasons why you should speak in tongues i've preached something like that before 50 reasons why you should preach speaking tongues i hope one of these days i will end up doing even if it's to do it in the even if it's to do it in um in a studio so that you can have it you know because many of us are filled with the holy spirit and we're wasting eternal life we're wasting what god has given us you know praise the lord hallelujah, hallelujah. so let's start this way what is the purpose of tongues okay okay before we start let's let's read the scripture let's open with the scripture um acts chapter 2 because that's where this whole tongues thing started acts chapter 2 because i see some people in certain churches that don't believe in speaking in tongues certain churches say all kinds of things about it it has passed it's people that are just murmuring you know there's a lot of i don't know why but can you guys give me a little more volume there's a lot of ignorance in the body of christ and People are proud in their ignorance. You know, they are proud in their ignorance. Even though they are ignorant, they will, they will go online and um, just give me your safest side, the one that will not waste so, okay? Even though they are ignorant, they will go online and start, like I see people talk against healing and they will be so bold, see all kinds of crazy stuff, you know? Someone was saying, I don't show my miracles in the public. I do my miracles in the private. <laughs> I don't show my miracles in the public. As if it's show that we came to do. It's not show. We came to solve problems. Tell anybody we came to solve problems. Every time I come on, especially if I have a miracle service, a lot of which reminds me that the purpose of that, that service is to solve problems. Well, I was reading some of the testimonies people were writing to, them, especially healing. And I never knew about those testimonies, like Joyce's testimony. I know she keeps saying she was healed of breast cancer, but you know I'm a doctor. So I take those things with a pinch of salt because that you have a breast lump doesn't mean it's a cancer. Are you getting me? So, and I've seen so many breast lumps healed. So sometimes I take it with a pinch of salt. Sometimes I believe because she's the one saying it until I saw the full testimony. Please, sometimes people should learn to give us the full testimony. She was even booked for surgery. She was even wheeled into the theater. And they started looking for the lump and they couldn't find it. You know? This is the second time. In fact, some other person that got healed, the mother refused. They wheeled her into the theater. They opened the breast and started looking for lump. I think that one was very annoying. And that doctor needs to be queried because ideally, before you operate, you check to be sure that uh, 
um, it's, it's what you're looking for is still there. Before you start wounding, it's not easy to give somebody a cut, you know. So that, that assumption was very bad. So, but I saw that and I, I, was, I, was, I was almost weeping because, you know, I didn't know all that happened. So we're not doing a show. Praise the Lord. So if you don't know something, just keep calm and go and learn. And everybody said amen. amen. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat on each of them. So they saw these flames. They saw these flames on each other's heads. You know, they saw the flames dangling over their heads. Tongue-shaped flames. I think God was trying to tell them, I'm about to give you a tongue of fire. So he gave them flames shaped like tongues. I think God has a sense of humor. You know. Can we all read verse 4 together? One to go. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them what? Utterance. All of them, 120 of them. We are what? Filled with what? The Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with what? With other tongues as the Spirit gave them what? Utterance. They were not filled with tongues. They were filled with what? The Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that they were filled with that now overflowed in what? Other what? Tongues. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you're hearing me saying I'm hearing so the tongues they had was an overflow of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. If you're hearing me, Sam, hearing. If not, there won't be any difference between them and the native doctors. Native doctors also pray in tongues. Occultists also pray in tongues. But the tongues we pray as Christian is the product of the infilling of what? The Holy Spirit. If you're hearing me, Sam, hearing. That's the tongue that we speak. It's an overflow. It's an overflow. Of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So if you are filled with the Holy Spirit as a believer, you should expect to speak in other words, in other tongues. I had a friend in SU. I was also in SU, but you know, he said he was filled with the Holy Spirit, but he doesn't speak in other tongues. That you don't have to speak in other tongues. That is a gift. He doesn't have that one. He has other gifts. No, there's a difference between the gift of tongues and the you know the prayer language that we see here. In Acts chapter 2. If you're hearing me, Sam, so hearing. There's a difference. There's a difference. This one is a general language. Someone say general language. That one is a special language. This is a general language for general communication. But that one now is a special. Just like in Nigeria, we have a general language, you know, like English. Everybody knows it, true or false. But when you see a Nigerian speaking French or German or Chinese, you know that he went and what? Learned it specially. True or false? True or false? But every average Nigerian speaks English. You don't need to go to school. There are people, in fact, there are people that did not go to school, but they speak very good English. And there are a lot of us that learned much of our English from television, like me. A lot of my English, I didn't learn it from English books. I learned it from television. That's why, you know, nowadays sometimes when people quarrel over television, and my wife quarrel a bit, she doesn't like children watching too much television. I say, see, my not television, I don't think you have Passover. I learned a lot of the things I learned from television. That's the truth. You know. But of course, our, the generation we have now are being distracted by screens. And they are now struggling. Those days, we don't have too many stations. Two stations, NTA and ABS. It opens by four with prayer and national anthem. And after that, children's cartoon. The cartoon finishes by six. Then they do some other national programs, children-based programs, that ends by seven. After that, no other children anything. So I feel a child, you have no business being on that TV from seven. You can't do your assignment. Uh -huh. Seven, they will do news. After news, they will do one agri program or one thing, document, documentary somewhere. Nine o'clock, they will do national news. 
10 o'clock they finish national news and you uh, by that time you said you have slept off but nowadays children 100 channels and they are running 24 hours which one would they watch wahala even adults find it difficult to choose which one to watch or for zomas and a lot of them are teaching trash you know so i don't blame that those people but but you get what i'm talking about so this is a general language someone says a general language and it's expected that if you're born of the spirit you must be able to speak the language of what the spirit and watch this now and there was dwelling at jerusalem oh my god help me today i plan to do this devout men out of every nation under the heavens now when this was noised abroad the multitude came together and were confounded because that they each that every man heard them speak in their own language now this is another confusion people have they said that tongues must be somebody's language so if you are speaking a tongue that is not somebody's language you shouldn't speak it no there are different things that God does with tongues on the day of Pentecost one of the things he did was that the people that gathered he made sure that one of the apostles or the people that were speaking their own what languages but that doesn't mean that all the apostles on the 120 were speaking languages of men because Paul said do I speak with tongues of what men and tongues of what angels so there are tongues of angels too there are tongues of heaven so sometimes when you are speaking in tongues it could be somebody's language or it could be the language of angels but one thing about tongues is it's a language you never learned i hear what i'm saying if you're hearing me say i'm hearing it would be a language you never what learned that you don't know when the holy ghost comes on you that thing flows out it bubbles up when you are filled it bubbles up from within Another thing about tongues is that many people think that when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will take your tongues and your mouth and begin to vibrate it. No. He said they spoke in tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them what? Utterance. So you are the one to do the speaking. The Holy Spirit's job is to give you what? The utterance. What is utterance? He will supply the words, but you will do what? The speaking. You won't just be vibrating. Bah, 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 bah. You know? That might be epilepsy. But of course, we have few occasions where people, when the Holy Ghost comes, they can't even control themselves. They just keep speaking. But many times, a lot of people will hear that, those words in their spirits. Rabba Santa, Rabba Santa, Kaba Kaba Laba, Yada Yada Yada. Then it's your job to, as He's giving you utterance, utterance means to supply thoughts and words. It is now your job to open your mouth and do the words, the speaking. And everybody said, Amen. So there are a lot of us already filled with the Holy Spirit, but why you're not speaking, hearing yourself, is because you have not opened your mouth and what and spoken. You are doubting what is inside you. That was why Jesus said, don't doubt it. He said, don't think that God is wicked. He said, you cannot ask God of, a, of bread and he will give you what? Stone. You cannot ask him fish and he will give you a serpent. So if you ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit, you must believe that whatever is coming out of you is genuine. If you're hearing me, Sam, I'm hearing. So these are some of the misconceptions that if you want to get people feel Holy Spirit, you must clear these things. And everybody said, Amen. So there were a lot of people from different places. I won't go into that because of time. And some, while some were saying, wow, what is this? They were amazed in verse 12. You see, you see, you see, Cretans and Arabian, and we do hear them speak. In, in our tongues talking about the wonderful works of God so the people say we are hearing these people they, we are, they are communicating to us in our own language we've seen that happen a lot around the world a man of God went to a conference in Germany and finished preaching and when he got down no finished yes preaching when he got down the woman started greeting him in German he said ah, he didn't understand what the woman was saying the woman said you don't understand but you just finished talking to me in my language he said ah I don't understand that though I was just speaking in tongues. The woman was surprised. Paul Crouch, the founder of TBN, his father was a missionary among the um, Arabs. And he said that when the anointing came on those Arabs and they got filled with the Holy Spirit, that they spoke perfect English, Bedouins. Perfect, and yet none of them have ever studied English. Perfect English. 
and we've seen cases where missionaries have gone to places where they didn't know those people's languages and when the anointing came on them they will speak those people's languages i've also seen another one i i, I read of a, a an awesome saint you know greek orthodox saint that when you come to him no matter the language you speak he understands you and when he speaks to you he doesn't speak he speaks greek but when he speaks to you you will understand what he's saying so there are many dimensions to these things you can't put god in a box tell your neighbor you can't put god in a box so <laughs> that is why he is what he is god and everybody said amen and the beautiful thing about tongues is that most times it stands as a syllable you know small small syllables mama papa sarah kara is called queen but as you grow in the spirit your language will expand so some people stop speaking because they are saying ah what am i saying makara 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 you know when i go feel the holy spirit you know I didn't fall down, nothing happened. I just heard some language in my spirit and I started speaking it. Rabba Santa, Rabba Santa. And I asked God, this Rabba Santa, is it good morning, good afternoon, good night? Because I spoke that Rabba Santa for one full year. <laughs> and I got the reply some years later. Like children, when they start learning to speak, what do they say? Mama, Papa, Tata. Sometimes everybody's Tata, everybody's Mama. Everybody's dada. Even sometimes my son David, even at this age, sometimes he mixes up daddy and mommy. Even at this age, you know. So, so it happens. But as that child begins to grow, are you getting me? As he begins to grow in vocabulary, keeps getting exposed to people, he will pick words. That's why the environment your child grows is very important. If he grows in a mad environment, like one of my neighbor's children, I don't know whether that child was up to two years. Or they had started saying she has started saying waka shege, you know, and that's something my children never said. They never said that. In fact, the first words I think Philip said was praise the Lord, Hallelujah. He came back from children's church, and what we are hearing, pia the yard, ayia, pia the yard, ayia. That's what his first words. So you have to create the kind of environment you want your children to grow in. I hear what I'm saying. You may have grown in a rough environment. It's now your responsibility as a father to create the right environment and everybody said amen that's why you must regulate what they watch what they hear who they mix up with where they go so that they can be exposed to the right thing and everybody said amen and some people mocked and said uh, it's just they are drunk then peter now caught up with the 12 and he said something he said peter standing with the 12 verse 14 lifted up his voice and said unto them hear ye men of judah and all you that dwell in jerusalem be this known unto you and hear my words for these men are not what are not drunk as you what suppose seeing is just the third hour of the morning and which bar opens by 9 a.m you know except in Ogwa, you know 9 a.m no meaningful bar opens by 9 a bars open in the evening see this is 9 a.m so these guys can't already be drunk as in when did they start the drinking for them to be drunk by 9 a.m., maybe the bar open by 4 a.m. You understand? He said no. He said, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet, what? Joel. And it shall come to pass. Can we read it together? One to go. I'm in verse, um, what now? 17. And it shall come to pass in the last day, says the Lord, that I will pour out my what? My spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see vision and your old men shall dream dreams and upon my servants and my mates handmaiden i will pour out my spirit in those days and they too shall what prophesy and everybody said amen so in these last days god doesn't just expect only prophets to prophesy god expects all of us to prophesy can you tell your neighbor god wants you to prophesy what is it? What does it mean to be prophets to prophet? The word prophesy means to speak words of power, words of divine potency. God wants you to use your own mouth to create your destiny, create what you want, determine what you want. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Very, very. That's why you must learn to pray in tongues and to prophesy. And everybody said, Amen. Okay, now I didn't plan that introduction, but I just sense it in my spirit that some people may need that introduction. So what is the purpose of tongues? I'll give you five. Number one, 
it is an initial evidence of the infilling. This is one of the signs that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. So if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are not speaking other tongues, I am not sure you are filled with the Holy Spirit. That my friend that said that thing, God has a sense of humor. I, I told the guy you are not filled with the Holy Spirit. Though. You want to, I didn't want to argue with him. I said, when you are filled, you will know. So one day, he went to a, an SU vigil. God has a sense of humor. He said, no, in SU, they don't preach that. They don't. I said, no problem. When you get filled, you will know. He went to an SU vigil, and guess what happened? In that vigil, he got filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and he spoke in tongues. In fact, it wasn't a vigil. It was an evening program. He spoke in tongues the whole night till the next day. He could not speak English. <laughs> He could not speak English. He spoke in tongues all through the night into the next day. When he told me, I laughed at him. I said, she is there. Nothing like that. I'm not. If I, I'm already feeling always I'm not speaking to I said, you don't collect. That one, you, you get fake. You don't collect original. Now, you know if he stop. Could not stop. He spoke in tongues throughout the night. He didn't sleep. He had to call me the next day and say, I don't know. I'm just speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues. How do we stop this thing? <laughs> I said, you don't go drink epitesh. <laughs> hallelujah somebody's going to have that experience in the name of Jesus God will show you that he's alive because we don't serve a dead God we serve what? a living God and everybody said amen so is the initial evidence of the infilling of the Holy Spirit that's one of the signs that you are filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in other tongues number two and I can give you many scriptures at least four scriptures to prove it if you look at this Acts chapter 2, you will see that if you go to Acts chapter 8, where the disciples, the apostles went to Samaria and ministered to them, that was the sign. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. That was what the, the sorcerer saw and wanted to buy that. He saw something. If you go to Acts chapter 10, while Peter was still preaching, the people were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in other tongues. Praise the Lord. If you go to Acts chapter 19, Paul met some people and said, have you been filled with the Holy Spirit when you believe? They say, we don't even know that there's a Holy Spirit. He said, how then were you baptized? saved? They said, they only received the baptism of John. And then he explained to them that John was just introducing Jesus. And after speaking to them, he got them saved. He baptized them in water. And laid, when he laid hands on them, Acts chapter 19, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in other tongues and prophesied. I've seen that one happen before. In Acts chapter 10, they've spoken tongues and glorified the Lord. I've seen that happen too. In fact, that's what I use a lot. I said, once you we finish pray for you, just open your mouth and bless God in your new language. When people open their mouth to thank God in that name, they flow, they flow out in tongues. Then in Acts chapter 19, the Bible said that they, I don't know who's on that stuff. They, they, they laid hands on them and they spoke in tongues and they what? Prophesied. I've seen this happen to a certain lady. She had been waiting for many years to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Who is, who is projecting? Anytime I talk, follow me. Get the scripture. You know. She was not also filled with the Holy Spirit. So she was expecting that, believing God, waiting. You don't need to wait. The Holy Spirit is not coming. He has come. I hear what I'm saying. What you need to do is to receive. Tell your neighbor, receive. Stop waiting. You are waiting on the Lord to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You don't need to wait. Just open your mouth and receive. Open your heart and receive. Then open your mouth and declare what you have received. So we, we, we hire my friend also. We cornered her in the study. We are reading all, all night reading. We cornered her and laid hands on her in the study room in our office. I used to be the coach there, so I had an office. My office there, we laid hands on her. She was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to prophesy to the nation. That's the first time I saw that. And when I saw it, I remembered scripture. I don't know about you. I like, I like experiencing scripture hello make up your mind to be that kind of christian that experiences what scripture for instance i want to experience every miracle jesus did i want to see it in my life i'm already getting there but there's there are some i have not i've not gotten very well raising the dead we've had some but i want more then the one that i'm i'm, I'm converting is and jesus healed the maimed maimed that people that their hands and legs were cut off i want new hands and legs grew out I want to see that one. I've seen hands and legs growing, short ones, but I want to see the one that I cut off, hands and legs grow out. Jesus experienced that. Look at it. And this, and when Paul, can we read together one to go? And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, 
the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke with tongues and what? Prophesied. Prophesied. Can you give us Amplified? I don't know. Let's see if it's different. So they spoke in tongues and prophesied. What is the difference between speaking in tongues and prophesying? Speaking in tongues is communicating in an unknown language. Prophecy is communicating in a known word language. So that is why most times when you give a message, what is the difference between praying in tongues or speaking in tongues and the gift of tongues? Praying in tongues is a normal prayer language. You should talk to God, you know. But giving a message in tongues, which is in the in, in book of 1 Corinthians 14, is talking about trying to give people a message in tongues. That one is a communication language. It's not between you and God. This one is not between you and somebody. And that one, now you have to interpret it in that person's language. That's what is called interpretation of what? Tongues. So tongues from interpret plus interpretation equals what? Prophecy. But some other times you can give prophecy without tongues. Look at it. And they spoke in foreign what? Unknown tongues or languages. So tongues is unknown to the speaker, but it may be known to the hearer. Are you getting what I'm saying? On the day of Pentecost, it was unknown to the Jews that we are speaking, but it was known to the different proselytes from different nations. If you read that scripture, see where they came from. They came from Egypt, they came from Syria, they came from Pamphylia, they came from Libya, they came from Africa, they came from Ethiopia. All of them came and they heard the word in their own language. That's called prophecy. Someone say prophecy. So as the guys were speaking, they were interpreting in their own language. So that, that lady prophesied prophecy to nations. I've never, I say, ah, this one is like backlog. All the tongues you, you have not spoken. She has been born again for a very long time. That's why teaching is important. When you are not taught right, praise the Lord, you will be robbed of some of the benefits that you have. You are meant to have as a believer. And everybody said, Amen. So she spoke all the backlog tongues, the ones that she, <laughs> the ones that had not spoken for years. She spoke it in one night. Somebody, God is going to, God's hand is coming on you in the name of Jesus. And you're going to prophesy in the name of Jesus. And sing in tongues. If you're hearing me, Sam, hearing. So for personal devotion and edification, number five, it is for spiritual intercession. Number four is for, for intercession and spiritual warfare. I have mixed it up. Intercession and spiritual warfare. So you can use it for intercession and spiritual warfare. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, now praying with all manner of prayer in the spirit. Can you put it up for us? All manner of prayer in the spirit. So one of the manner of prayer is tongues. Somebody say tongues. That's what we commonly call praying in the spirit. You say pray at all times. Look at it, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. You say pray at all times, on every occasion, in every reason, in the word spirit. That's talking about tongues. With all manner of prayer and what and entreaty. To that end, keep alert and watch with all strong purpose and what perseverance interceding in behalf of the saints god's word consecrated people so you can use it to pray when you get to the end of what you know to pray you begin to pray in other tongues and god will use that to reveal some things or use your words to address things that you may not know in your understanding i'm not really preaching about tongues today i just want to because that's a full teaching but are you getting something already then number five, purpose of tongues for angelic instructions and heavenly download. For angelic instructions and heavenly download. I'm sorry, some of you may have seen it here. So you may see us saying, Shata, Shasa, Keba, Keba, Laba, Yaba. So somebody that comes say, What's Pastor doing? No, I'm giving instructions. I speak to angels in tongues. I speak to demons in tongues. They all are. speak to angels in tongues they are tongues of angels there are things I want to say there's no English for them so I, I speak to angels in tongues hallelujah 
and it also helps me sometimes I'm trying to download some things I do it in other tongues because Paul says when I pray in tongues my spirit what prayers but my understanding is what unfruitful so when you are praying it is your spirit that is praying you may not understand it to your mind but your spirit understands what he's saying it also said that he that speaks in unknown tongues oh i'm getting ahead of my time i get off myself so we'll come to that praise the lord second first corinthians chapter 14 verse 18 so paul said i speak in tongues more than all of you can you imagine he speaks in more tongues than the whole church of Corinthian, one man why he spends a lot of time praying words in tongues i was listening to pastor i said many of you don't spend time praying in tongues that is why you are grounded that tongues is an aviation tool when you spend time in tongues you will fly you will fly in life you will break limitations you'll be lifted you will get intelligence you will move with speed so one of the keys to supernatural speed is spending time praying in other words tongues praying in other tongues praying in other tongues tongues is the doorway into the spirit realm the more you pray in tongues the more you will enter the realm of the spirit if you're hearing me sam hearing the more you begin to see visions the more you begin to hear from god the more you will, ex- you will come in contact with the anointing. Many men and women of God that I know that are used mightly by God spend a lot of time praying in tongues. Kenny Hagin said he spends eight hours minimum every day in tongues. Eight hours. He's so disciplined that even when he's watching foot, uh, um, baseball, they are play- he's praying in tongues. You see his mouth moving. Oh, I had a friend like that. Anything he's doing is praying in tongues. He's driving, he's praying in tongues. And you see those people, they are spiritually in tune. You want to have a smart spirit. Spend time praying in other words, tongues. Is praying in tongues like tuning your radio. Tuning, tuning, tuning. The more you tune it, the clearer you get. Ah, you guys are missing. There's some kind of TV we used to have in those days. You have to tune it. <laughs> You have to tune the antenna to turn like this, turn like this, because it's you do shh, you have a shh, then you start seeing. People may not understand what I'm talking about tuning. Even radio, you have to tune it. But I think even car radios now, you still have to tune. So turn, it tunes your spirit to pick the frequencies of God. If you're hearing me, Sam, so hearing. Okay, let's go. Let's talk about benefits of speaking in other tongues. Number one, personal edification. It brings you spiritual growth. If you spend time praying in other tongues, you will grow fast spiritually. It edifies you. It builds you up. First Corinthians 14, 4, 14 verse 4. He says, He that speaks in other tongues edifies himself. To edify has two major meanings. One is to build up. It builds up your spirit man it builds up your spiritual house like you are building a house so the more you are praying in tongues the more flaws you are adding so you see people that spend time they have skyscrapers in the spirit whereas some other people have bungalow some even have underground house in the spirit because they don't spend time praying in the spirit another word for edify means to charge like a battery you see people that spend their time praying in tongues they are ch- charged they are anointed. Power is flowing out of them. Wisdom is flowing out of them. They are fearless. If you touch them, you will know that you touch naked wire. You will be electrocuted. You see them be moved with divine speed. If you are hearing me, Sam, hearing. If you've watched all those flash, you see that one of the keys to making them faster is electric different kind of electronic connections batteries the stronger the battery the faster they get and there's a speed they get to they disappear how many of you have watched flash before what do you guys watch i can't pop can't watch good film that make you think flash there are so many seasons isn't it 
see when they are running they are uh, it's like electrical electric is sparking lightning uh-huh. it's charging so if you charge yourself in the spirit there's a level you get to you disappear uh, when they talk about supernatural transportation in science so there's a voltage of electricity you pass through something it will disappear because there's a speed that you get to there's a speed that something will get to to disappear some other day we'll talk science and everybody said amen so what is the size of your spiritual house ask your neighbor what is the size of your spiritual house are you living in a spiritual bungalow or one floor or two floors after 10 years it's still bungalow some is even hot yeah, they are not built up they are not strong the more time you spend praying in tongues you'll be built up Ken Hagen said that there's a scripture Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 he started praying that prayer for six months in tongues he said in six months he was more developed as a Christian than 12 years as a believer in fact he asked himself after six months what have I been doing in the past 12 years even the wife asked him you know so much now before I go out so the day he's busy he spent three to four hours praying before he, what does he now do the day he has time what does he do the day he has time so plan yourself to grow tell your neighbor plan yourself to grow tell him make progress rise like an edifice no you're not talking to your neighbor say make progress in your career in your ministry in your business rise higher and higher like a big building praying what in the holy ghost so make out time to do that jesus said can't you watch with me at least one hour that's the least you should take praying in the spirit one hour if you're hearing me sam hearing number two benefits of speaking in other tongues it brings you rest and refreshment it brings you rest spiritual rest and refreshment philippians chapter 4 verse 6 philippians chapter 4 verse 6 it says be anxious for what nothing don't always give me give me king james can we read together one to go okay this one says be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to god i think and i will say be anxious for nothing stop being anxious so let's go to verse 7 do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to god yes can we go to verse 7 can we read together one to go and the peace of god which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and mind in the knowledge of Christ. go back to king james will keep your heart in the knowledge of christ so you have peace you have rest when you spend time praying what in the holy spirit so stop being anxious tell them about stop being anxious hallelujah isaiah chapter 28 verse 11 so when you pray in the holy spirit you are strengthened you are refreshed philippians chapter ephesians 4 13 says I can do all things through Christ who what strengthens me. The word Christ is the anointing of the anointed one that infuses inner strength in me. So when you spend time praying the Holy Spirit, you are filled with inner strength. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. If you're here, say I'm here. Let's look at um, Isaiah 28 verse 11. They actually talked about it. Isaiah talked about this in the Old Testament. Isaiah 28, verse 11 and 12. How many together? One, two, go. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this to his people. This, he was prophesying about tongues. Stammering lips. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, can we go on? He said, to whom he said, this is what the rest where which you will cause you may cause the weary to what rest and this is what the refreshing that they, they will hear 
So tongues is a place of rest. Someone says a place of rest. When you don't know what to do, you don't know where your rent will come from. Spend time praying what in tongues. Peace will come. Rest will come. Is somebody hearing me? If you're hearing me, Sam, you hear me know. This is the rest. This is the rest. When the doctors say they are going to take off your legs, just smile and laugh in the Holy Ghost and pray in the Spirit. Rest will come. When you are weak and you are tired, someone say, Pastor Bill, how are you able to do this? You go to work, you come back, you enter church, you are ministering with power. The pastor was asking me when I was telling him my schedule, all the reading I have to do, all the research I'm doing. So he said, how come you are able to do this and you still come and flow miracles? Like yesterday, the pastor was talking about it in the meeting. The women's convention, he told me in the car park. I was in the car park coming back to Enugu after a busy day that I'm flowing. I said, flow, I don't understand. He said, you are flowing. I said, I thought, sir, you say we will assist you. How did assistance now become leading? He said, you are preaching. Oh. It was at that car park I called Pastor Winnie there to bring my clothes. Because I now calculated I won't be able to get to him and get to the meeting. And the devil fought like crazy that the, our car spoiled somewhere in the outskirts of Enugu. We waited for almost 30 minutes. We couldn't find any. The driver was just, he went to look for fuel. Very interesting guy. He wants to use 7,000 naira fuel in this to come from Abakliki to Enugu. In this, I don't know how some people think. 7,000 naira for if you put in your car, your, your indicator will not move. On. That's what you want to use for an hour, hour, an hour 30 minutes journey. Because, yes, it's an hour journey, but you must ask police now, add traffic jam, add other wala. Stop us. So, when he became, he went and came back, we came to us that this man doesn't have plan. We started looking for any kind of vehicle to enter. We and if you see the bus, we enter them. They are coming from market to Tabu. For Kaibua in the Apu niche. When I got a go, they started offloading Apu for how many minutes? I was praying in tongues. I said, Oh my God, I meant to preach by six. I was just praying in tongues, praying in tongues. Finally, they moved, dropped us close to the airport. Do you know that for more than 30 minutes, we could not find a taxi, we could not find a bus going to Anambra. And the rain was beating us, me and one girl. I was like feeling, should I just call them and cancel? I said, please, I couldn't make it. But I said, no, I can't disappoint my pastor. I kept praying. I prayed in tongues. I prayed in my understanding. The guy asked to come and pick me. Some of you that work with us, you learn to pray. Some of you don't pray. He went and took another road. Garewa. When you walk close to authority, you learn to pray in the Holy Spirit. So that the devil doesn't use you to frustrate them. So we had to start walking. You see that bridge? We walked from down, cross the flag, climb that bridge. We have almost walked halfway to church before he now came and picked us. It was in the bedroom, I changed my clothes. In the toilet, I changed. It was inside the hall, I put on my perfume at the back of the hall. I didn't even remember to comb my hair. It's when I was climbing the stage, I, I touched my hair and felt water. I said, Lord, may they not see the water. <laughs> I think it's anointing or something. <laughs> And you saw many people that were healed that night, delivered. Why? Someone said, this is the rest. And this is the refreshing. No, say it again. This is the rest. And this is the refreshing. What was I doing all the way from Abakuriki to Enugu? Praying in tongues. What was I doing standing on that road in the rain? Praying in tongues. What was I doing as I walked down the road? Praying in tongues. I was refreshing my spirit. So by the time I came in there, and I was already charged. The battery is full. If you're hearing what I'm saying, Sam, so I'm here, you know. He said, this is the rest. This is the refreshing. That's why the devil will always want to distract you from praying in tongues. Because he knows this is where you can get real rest and peace. This is where you can be refreshed. Your anointing can be refreshed. Many of your anointing is old. Many of you feel weak. There's a place you can be refreshed. It's in the presence of God, praying in the other tongues. And everybody say the Amen.
so this is the rest and this is a refreshing praying in other tongues also drives away depression drives away anxiety once you break through in tongues pray until you break through pray until you have peace pray until you have joy Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3 because the Bible says with joy will you draw out of the wells of what? salvation once you pray in tongues and you break into joy that point where you start laughing and smiling <laughs> you have entered the breakthrough you have entered the healing you have broken into the deliverance if you're hearing me say I'm hearing you have broken into the finance very very important hallelujah number three the third benefit of tongues is to keep yourself in the love of God it gives you an understanding of God's love Ephesians chapter 3 verse 19 it said that you being rooted and grounded in the love of God you may be able to what and to love know the love of Christ which passes what all understanding Say that you may be able to come. Okay, they go to verse 17, I think. Let's go back a bit. That Christ may what dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being what rooted and grounded in love. Yes, verse 18. May be able to comprehend with all the sense what is the breadth and length and depth and height. Verse 19. And to know the love of God which passes what knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of what of God so when you are praying in tongues it begins to unveil to you the depths of God's love you begin to feel the heart of God and before you know it you'll be filled with the fullness of God you'll be filled with his power you'll be filled with his presence and you can step out and do miracles heal the sick open blind eyes solve problems I see somebody being strengthened here in the name of Jesus It brings you an understanding of the word of God. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 talks about the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of it. One way this spirit of wisdom and revelation comes is by praying in tongues. As you pray, God anoints you. That thing is an anointing. An anointing of wisdom. An anointing of revelation. The word of God begins to open to you. The plan of God begins to open to you. The more time you spend speaking or praying in other tongues. If you're hearing me, Sam, hear it. So if you want to understand your Bible, pray in tongues before you read it. And not just your Bible, your books. I used to do it in campus. I would sit down, I'll pray in tongues for 30 minutes before I open my books. When I open the book, the book opens. I start understanding things. So whether it's your chemistry book or your physics book or your biology book or your commerce book, you will understand it more when you pray in tongues before you open it. If you're hearing me, Sam, here, you know, because it brings you the spirit of wisdom and what revelation the spirit of wisdom is inside prophetic insight the spirit of revelation is understanding you just begin to understand those things i remember when i began to do it, my physiology textbook that book is big like this my eye just opened i saw what physiology was about when i began to do it with my anatomy textbook god just showed me just simplify it anatomy is a picture of the body function, the different aspects of the body. It's just like an album showing you where things are. Just a simple explanation in my head. And that is stop being boring. They say physiology is just a story of how the body functions. Just read the story. And ex that's how I was able to finish guiding a big textbook like this. But before I want to understand every line, say no, it's a story. Read it like storybook. Say read it like storybook. That's how I started understanding it and I finished the textbook. So when you pray in tongues, things will be simplified. If you're hearing me, say I'm hearing. Number four, benefits of speaking in tongues. It builds up your faith. I think we've touched this a bit. Jude 20. But you building up yourself on your most what? Holy faith. Praying what? In the Holy Ghost. When you pray in tongues, doubt will disappear. Fear will disappear. And faith will rise in you. 1 Corinthians 14, 14. Paul said, when I pray, my spirit prays. My understanding is unfruitful. So when you pray in tongues, your spirit prays. Your spirit is strengthened. 
when you pray in tongues, he said that he that speaks in an auto edifies himself. You are built up. You are built up inside you. You are strong inside you. So that's why you see us sometimes. We are roaring. We are, we are barking at demons. We are barking at problems. It's because we have spent time to build our faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And everybody said, Amen. Praise God. Number five, it enables you to pray perfectly. First John chapter 5, verse 14. First John chapter 5, verse 14. He helps you pray. Bible says we know not what to pray. Verse. Okay. Yeah, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. If we know he heareth us, we know we have the request we have of him. If you look at Romans chapter 8, it says we do not know what to pray as we ought. But the Holy Spirit helpeth our infirmity. Romans chapter 8, I think it's from verse 26. With groans that are too deep to, to what? To be uttered. Look at it. Yes. Verse 27. So sometimes you don't know what exactly is the problem. You know there's a problem. You don't know what it is. Just pray in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will address it through you. He said, and he that searches the heart knows what is in the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So the Holy Spirit prays for you according to what? The will of God. I, I hear what I'm saying. So when you spend time praying in tongues about a matter, the Holy Spirit leads your spirit to address a relevant issue. In fact, if you read, if you know what it says in verse 26 in the Greek, it will make it simple. He said, He helpeth our infirmity. The word helpeth is the word sunam anti lombanomai. It means to take hold with us against your position. The picture is a picture of somebody riding a horse. When you are riding a horse, it is the rider that determines the direction the horse goes to. If you pull the reins on the right, the horse will turn right. If you, you know what? You know, they connect it with something in the mouth. When you pull it like this, the horse will turn this way. If you pull it more, it will turn around and go back. If you pull it from the left, it will turn left. If you strike the reins, the horse will move forward. If you hit in the paws, the, you know, they normally, there's something that they put by the side. They call it what? If you hit the horse, like, it will go faster. So it's the person that is driving the horse that determines the direction. So what happens when you pray in the Spirit? The Holy Spirit rides you as a horse. Are you getting me? He turns you in the direction you should go. Maybe you are praying about a problem. You think it's your mother-in-law that is your problem. But when you begin to pray, you realize that that is not from your mother-in-law. I think I was ministering to somebody lately. So, you know, she was going through some issues. And I was wondering, where is this thing coming from? Is there sin? Is there foundation? Whatever, whatever. I even asked her. She said, I don't know if any sin or foundation, maybe... But as we began to pray, my eyes just opened. I saw a woman by her side, an old woman. First, I saw her tied to a pole, going around in circles. And I addressed that. That this thing is, this sickness keeps you going around in circles. Stops you from progressing. But as we continue to minister to her, my eyes opened. And I saw an old woman there. Like trying to afflict her. So I now knew when I addressed the woman and commanded her to get out. And of course, while I was, she started screaming, man, manifesting her. And the Lord said to me, you may think you are guessing. He said, ask, ask somebody else. And in this prayer group, they saw the same thing you saw. And I asked one of our brethren that was with us, what did you see? She said something. For her own, even more elaborate. She said she saw somebody and the person like stole something from her that was golden. I said that person was trying to take away her destiny. But as we prayed, the person returned it and ran away. Praise the Lord. You know, we know not what to what to pray. But the Holy Spirit what helps our what? Infirmity. With words that are too grown to what? Water. If you're hearing me, Sam, hear you know. I remember one time one of our prayer secretaries just started acting mad <laughs> so as, as if she would lose her mind so i wonder what is the problem just started laughing making some noises 
So we, we drag that. There's a place we pray. We drag that to that place. You're just acting funny, behaving like a mad woman. We drag that to that place. And I was wondering, what is the problem? I didn't know what the problem is. What would you start binding? But as we pray to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit said, put your hand inside her hair. Because she made this new fine hair with Yvonne and all that. I said, eh? He said, that Yvonne she's wearing is a problem. It's where the problem is coming from. It's infected by demons. You're not saying your own is infected by demons. But you need to pray over those things. If you know where they get some of those things you guys wear. Some of them is human hair. Who was the human that had the hair? Let's not go somewhere now. Who is the human that had the hair? So I ran and I put my hand in her hair. She was manifested, screamed. And the demon came out of her and she became normal. So I said, the Holy Spirit helped our infirmity. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, let's begin to wrap up now. So it helps us pray perfectly. That's why Paul said, I will pray in, my, in the spirit and I will pray in my understanding. So when you get to the end of your understanding, switch over to the spirit. Someone says, switch over to the spirit. That's how you can actually pray for long. Some people can't pray for long. They just pray, Father, bless my father, bless my mother, bless us in Jesus' name, amen. Any other thing, nothing. No. When you get to the end of your understanding, switch to what? To the spirit. Hallelujah. And then you'll be able to pray other things. I get what I'm saying. Paul downloaded his messages by praying in tongues. That's why he said, he who speaks in tongues speaks the truth in a mystery. Mysteries are hidden secrets. Past, present, and future. You can be downloaded in tongues. From tongues, you can connect to word of knowledge, word of wisdom. You can get understanding. He who speaks in tongues speaks the truth in a mystery. First Corinthians chapter 14, I think it's verse 2. Number 6. It helps us to intercede well for the church. I think we talked about this before. But let's look at Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 to 20 talks about it. So we read it before but you can just put it up. It helps us to deal with the prayer needs of the saints. When you are praying for brethren, if you pray in tongues, you will deal with the prayer needs of the saints. It helps us to adequately block and defeat all the assaults of the enemy. So as you are praying in tongues, you can deal with all the assaults of the enemy, all the issues. It helps us to pray for protection and facilitation of our leaders. It also helps us to pray for utterance and impact for our leaders and services in general. So if you look at that Ephesians chapter 6, you go to verse 19. So this place he said, for which... No, go, go back again. I say verse 19, you've gone to 20. And for me, somebody say, and for me, that utterance may be what? Given unto me. That I may what? Open my mouth boldly to make known what? The mystery of the gospel. Verse 20. So, when, so the other first part talked about praying for the saints. This one is talking about praying for what? The man of God. Okay, just, just. Okay, for which I'm an ambassador in bond, that I may what? I may boldly speak as I ought. So, he prayed for utterance. What is utterance? God, give me the right words. So that we want to teach some things. We don't know the words to say it. Give me the right word to say some things. Show me the right way to say it. Number two, give me boldness. There are things we want to teach. Sometimes we don't have the boldness to say it. But if you really pray for your pastors well, we have boldness to pray and to deal with whatever issue that God wants us to deal with in our lives. And you'll be better for it in the name of Jesus. I say you'll be better for it in the name of Jesus. So the finally, it brings us divine direction. As you pray in tongues, you shut down your mind. Remember that scripture. You can put it again. I think 14, 14. It says, he that speaketh in your own tongue. He said, when you pray in tongues, your spirit prays, but your mind is what? Unfruitful. It shuts down your mind and activates your spirit. He 
it sharpens your spirit to hear God and to get direction for your life, for security, for provision. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. Are you guys ready with us? To which none of these princes of this world knew, for if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Okay, but that's not what I'm going to check. I think check second Corinthians. He said, For for no one knows the spirit of God, but the Spirit, the Holy Spirit teaches us. So you don't know the mind of God, but the Holy Spirit is the one that what communicates to us the mind of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Final scripture, Proverbs 20, verse 5. He said, counsel is like deep water, but a man of understanding draws it what? Out. Many times you don't know, for instance, some of us that are pastors, people can come to you with problems. You don't even know how to address it. It happens to me a lot. They are talking, I don't know what, I just start praying in tongues under my breath. Lord, direction, direction. What is the issue? What is the solution? I do it a lot. And before I know it, a light bulb comes up in my spirit. I know what to address and that's it sometimes i'm ministering to people i'm looking for where the problem is and all of a sudden the holy spirit as i pray in tongues the holy spirit leads me so even in ministration say lay hands on the tongue there's something there you don't lay hand person who scream go under the power <laughs> we've seen ladies that have ekeowa in their tongue ekeowa you know what's called ekeowa big snake for example, if you see all these ladies sleeping around, they are not normal. They have an engine inside them, a demonic engine. That's why they can sleep with 100 men. You can't do it normally. You can't even sleep with three. In a short while, so you sleep, satisfy 100 men. It's from morning, they are sleeping with somebody. They are not normal. You see people that have problems with you know, immorality. They are not normal. There are things inside them. But anything that my father has not planted in you will be uprooted today in the name of Jesus. Some people have ropes. I've seen things. There was a guy I was ministering to today. Yeah, not today. In this church. Ah, I just looked. The guy, is, he has chains on his leg and he's tied to the ground. He can't make any motion. And the fact that I was seeing it, he was seeing it too. Chains. Like some of you that they've invited into the kingdom of darkness, they give you gifts. Like one lady, they gave her gifts. She had bangles on her leg. But what she don't know is that that is not bangle. You know, there's not much difference between bangle and um, and uh, fetters. There's chain joining the two bangles. <laughs> so in her mind, uh, a bangle, chain. Another one has seen wearing bangle, wristband. What's in between the wrist? You know, there's no more difference between bangle and chain. And handcuff, or just one chain that connects her up. In her mind, that they gave me a marriage bangle, but she she was in handcuff, stranded in life. I've seen people caged, and these are things that I wouldn't know normally. I, I get to what I'm saying, but as you begin to pray, you know, because sometimes some of you watch us and think we're doing a man's, it's not a man's, it's because you're shallow. When you go deep, you see things. For instance, some of that your off the, your offices. If God open your eyes to the things in those your offices, the things that are buried or your compounds, you'll be shocked. Stop being an ordinary Christian. You have a supernatural advantage. Tell your neighbor you have a supernatural advantage. Tongues is your supernatural word advantage. As you begin to spend more time praying in tongues, God will open your eyes to see problems and open your eyes to see how to solve them if you're hearing me say i'm hearing as you pray in tongues you activate angels to move on your behalf because you don't only pray tongues of men you also pray tongues of what angels as you pray in tongues you move the spirit of god to move in your behalf if you're hearing me say i'm hearing you that's why i said go back to that ephesians chapter 6 Verse 18 says, let's pray with all manner of what? Prayers. All manner of prayers. 
learn to pray with all my when you are finished with your understanding switch to tongues address your family issues address your your business issues and you will have victory all around in the name of jesus stand on your feet just begin to pray in the holy spirit pray in other tongues that's what we mean when we say pray in the holy spirit or pray in the spirit everybody just pray in the spirit ask god for understanding of this message ask god for tongues the key to supernatural speed tongues the key to acceleration Masata kapata kopoto kopoko to robakoto shikapata kapata rezoto robokoto shikapata la robakoto robokoto shikapa ramato sheke palato robakota karabato ke barakoto koto oh robababa sota la robababa can i hang say he was wondering why his brother was not getting saved until one day as he was praying he saw a little monkey on his shoulder that would always speak to him and lie to him lie to him lie to him anything they say the thing this demon will say something different and he rebuked that demon it flew off the neck squealed like a little puppy and ran out of the back door and that that guy got saved ramato prokotosh kepata kapa ina makora batoko prokotosh kepato kala parakata katoka rabakata ka shala rabada bada bada i say give me ephesians 6 verse 18 rosoto robato she pratos kepato rakata sokoto rasata parakatosh kepato le prakatosh kepata la baraba rapato kala rabakata kata praying with all manner of prayer and supplication in the spirit sometimes in the spirit you are supplicating sometimes in the spirit you are interceding Rama, so the Holy Spirit knows the prayer that is necessary to solve the problem. Sometimes you are rebuking. Rasoto la barakata prakatosh kepata kata kata. Rezoto prokotosh kepata. Rezota patoka prakatosh. Can somebody just pray in the Holy Ghost? Rezata parakotosh kepata. Makapato le bara. Rasoto prokotosh kepata kata. Rezapato ko prokotosh. If you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, just lift your hand wherever you are. Let's know. So you we can pray for you too to be filled with Holy Spirit so you can enjoy what other people are enjoying. Resole Brados Kapatola Barakata Parapa. You are not filled with the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in other tongues. Just raise your hand where you are. So we can pray for you too. Bashoti Pridos Kopoto. Mata Banamato Parado Kota Barakoto Sheke Para. Just Saparato Kota Prakatosh Kepata La Parakata Pata. Repato Prokotosh Kepato Kota Kata. Enamato Rabato Kota Kaparakoto Kata Kata. This is the rest. This is the refreshing. Resoto prokotos. Can you begin to just refresh yourself in the Holy Ghost? Resola barados ke prakatos kapata. Dabata balabada. Dabato balabada. Dabata labada bashikaba. Rasata la raba kapara bato prokotos ke pata. Yeshota la raba laba raba. This is the rest. This is the refreshing. Masata la raba kora bato ke pata. Reso prekatos ke pata. Latata para kato ka prekatos ke pala prekatos. Reso te prekatos. Just begin to refresh yourself in the Holy Ghost. Reso prekatos ke pata. I know you may feel tired in your body. I know you may feel tired. You may be discouraged. But this is the rest. Reso pala brada kora bato she prekatos ke pata. Ena makora bato ke pata. Me rosoto prokotosh ke pata, re bata brakata bala brakata kata kabara kata brakata kata, masata la brakata prakatosh ke pata kata, re shata parakato prakatosh ke pata kapa kata, re shata kaparakato kaparakato kata. Ena masokata para shepra kotoske. Any scripture I quote, just post it. Post that Isaiah scripture. This is the rest. This is the victory. Masota la bora basoka rabasoka tapara kotosh shepra kotosh ke pata. In a makoraba toko prokotoshke zeprike. As you're praying, it just imagine that they are pouring water on you. They are refreshing you. They are refreshing you. They are refreshing you. He sato la brada. In a makoraba koto prokotoshke zepra. Out of your spirit, they are pumping water out and pouring it on you. Out of your spirit, they are pumping water and pouring it on you. Oh, this is the rest where which you shall cause the weary to to rest, and this is a refreshing. Yes, and what was it in the previous verse? It from the people of a stammering tongue, stammering lips. That's what they're talking about. Tongues is the rest. Tongues is a refreshing. When you are down, when you are down, when you can't see, you no more vision, no more hope. 
There's something that will bring you peace. There's something that will silence your enemies. There's something that will silence opposition is tongues. There's something that will silence opposition is tongues. He shall There's something that will sort out your problems is speak praying in other tongues. Can you just pray now? I don't know where you are having issues. I don't know what you are worried about. I don't know where that place you have you have fought so hard. You have fought so hard. But yet no victory can you pray in tongues just focus on that area and pray in tongues god is going to give you rest in that area he knows how to sort it out he knows what to deal with he knows who to deal with he knows what the problem is Rapata shala prada bada ba rebala prega da da prega da 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 prega da 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 prega da 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 da. You don't know how to pray your rent. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Ya shata la bada da ba. You don't know how to pay your children's school fees. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Resoto prokotosh kapa. As you pray, light will come. As you pray, understanding will come. As you pray, direction will come. The Bible says, He that speaketh in unknown tongue, He speaks the truth in a mystery. He reveals spiritual truth. He unveils realities. You may not know the way, but God knows the way. You may not know the way, but God knows the way. As you pray in the Holy Ghost, He will open the way. He will open the way. He will open the way. He will show you the way. He will show you the way. He will show you the way. Rasotala barada bada. Resotakada. We know not what to pray as we ought. We know not what to pray as we ought. But the Spirit helped our infirmity. He strengthens our weaknesses. He strengthens our weaknesses to pray as long as we need to. <laughs> he strengthens our weaknesses so pray as long as we will need to he directs us the direction to pray that was Surah Mantinam. another picture is a move picture of somebody with a submachine gun you can turn it the holy spirit knows the direction to turn the gun of your spirit to hit the enemy to deal with the enemy Jude chapter 20 but you now building yourself for your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost when you begin to pray in the holy ghost fear disappears doubt disappears your faith is charged can somebody begin to charge himself begin to charge up your faith in the next few minutes because you're about to deal with some issues now. Because you're about to deal with some issues now open your mouth and begin to address address that mountain before you what is your down mountain for before Zerul Babel, you shall be leveled. For it's not by power, it's not by my power, by my spirit. When the spirit is released, as you pray in the Holy Ghost, the mountains will be leveled. Not by power, not by my, but by my spirit. By my spirit, by my spirit, say the Lord. What is that mountain? Marapato Prokotoshke, Repete Prakatoshke, Banda, 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 Rika Prakatoshke, Pataka Prakata, Resote. What is that mountain standing between you and your success? Standing between you and your business? Standing between you and your marriage command it to be level right now command it to be level right now Masoto standing between you and your success Rasoto standing between you and your peace and your joy 
We command every mountain to be leveled, every mountain of difficulty, every mountain of financial distress, every mountain of impossibility, every snare, every manipulation from the pit of hell. Begin to command every financial mountain to melt. Melt in the name of Jesus. School fees melt. Rent melt. Redept melt. We command every mountain of finances before us to be level. Be level, 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 be level. Mountains of infertility be level, be level, be level, be level, be level, be level. In the name of Jesus. No matter what the doctor says. Not by power or by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I've tried my energy. I've tried my strength. I've tried medicine. Now let the spirit take over. Holy Spirit take over. Holy Spirit take over. Holy Spirit take over. Holy Spirit take over. Parado pogodosh kapalabara. Shale shapa kapa lepo shapa lepo shapa lepo. Be leveled. Be leveled. Be leveled. Satala rada bakosha tala barakataya. Satala rada bakatola rada bakataya. Sakala rada basata pada katapa. I want you to address specific financial mountains. There's a lot of dryness around. There's a lot of difficulty. Command the door to be open. In the name of Jesus, we command the door of abundance to be open. We command the doors of abundance to be open. Be open in the north. In the name of Jesus, be open in the south. In the name of Jesus, be open in the east. In the name of Jesus, be open in the north. In the name of Jesus, be open in the south. In the name of Jesus, be open in the east. In the name of Jesus, we command this financial tightness to cease. Say that we rebuke you. Begin to rebuke spirit of lack. Lack is a spirit. We rebuke every spirit of lack, every spirit of lack in our lives, every spirit of lack, every spirit of difficulty. We bind you in the name of God. We command the doors of abundance to open. The doors of abundance to open. Open in the north, open in the south, open in the east, open in the west. We command resources to begin to flow. Psalm 68 verse 29, begin to rebuke the beasts of the marshes, the head of bulls and the cows of the people. Every devil that is holding your money, every devil that is stopping your customers, every devil that is stopping our members, our clients, said that we rebuke you, we rebuke you. We command you to clear from the way, we rebuke the beasts of the marshes, we rebuke the beasts of the marshes, we rebuke the beasts of the marshes, we clear them from the way. We clear. Sometimes the mountain you are looking is people, sometimes the mountains are demons, whatever the mountains are, in the name of Jesus, clear from the way. Clear from the way. Clear from the way. Take your hands off our people. Take your hands off their money. Seven, take your hands off our people. Take your hands off their money. Take your hands off their jobs. Take your hands off our contracts. Take your hands off our partners. Take your hands off our kings, off our queens, off our helpers, off our clients, in the name of our customers. Now I'm beginning to release the angels. So begin to bring all that you're trusting God for. Can you talk? Can you pray in the Holy Ghost? We release the angels. We release the angels. Paul said, Though I speak in tongues of men and tongues of angels, there is tongues of and somebody speak the tongues of angels now. Are they not ministering spirits sent to minister for them that shall be called heirs of salvation? Resota pa. Resota pa. Resota pa. Resota pa. Resota pa. Rebato protosh. Kepata lai. Reprata skepa. Rekipatosh. Bang it to God. 